have a lot of teams at CIG. They all work in slightly different ways, so content teams work differently to feature teams. Um, but from playing the game and seeing how you guys play the game, it was clear that it was not quite working for flight and combat. So to rectify that, we created the vehicle experience team. We're kind of like a small kind of specialist team, so we've all kind of got kind of core interests and that really allows us to kind of provide good feedback. The really heavy IFCS bug, right? And we were like, oh my God, we fixed it, we fixed it. And it was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, we fixed this thing, right? <laughs> so it's like... A lot of our other internal teams are just dedicated to developing features. So they get the brief for a feature, they make the feature, they move on to the next feature. We created some kind of basic designs that allowed us the freedom just to tackle them in a way that it was more about trying to discover what was wrong and how we could improve it and how we could implement it right, basically, this time. So, you know, that was kind of one of our goals, which is to improve the kind of core experience. You don't know upfront what's going to be fun, right? You, you have to experience these things. And so we kind of embrace that kind of uncertainty now. So I'd say that the experimental kind of side to it has had its kind of pluses and minuses. This way of working with like rough design goals meant that we get very short iteration loops and very, very short steps towards the, the actual combat experience that we want to have. As downside, it does actually add to the kind of timeline because we end up kind of putting time into things possibly we, we you know, we won't ship as a feature. But, you know, overall we think that's a better kind of process. So over the past few weeks, we've kind of been putting the final tweaks on it, on um, the atmospheric flight and the uh, thrust efficiency. We've, it hasn't been kind of a smooth journey, but we've been working with the tech team to kind of improve some of the problems we've discovered along the way. So we want the atmospheric flight and combat to feel completely different to space flight and combat. It shouldn't just be the same model, but with some drag applied. We want it to feel more like the, the World War II flight experience. You want that combat range is in closer, you want it more visceral, and you want to have a more dynamic experience. A big challenge with the atmospheric flight is the kind of wide range of planets we have. So we've got planets like Lawville, where you come in and you've got like 60,000 feet of atmosphere to come down. And if you're carrying like an 89 jump into that atmosphere, you're really going to ask yourself, do you really want to do this? Because it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of planning to kind of land that ship correctly. And then you've got to take off and leave the atmosphere. So. The shape of the ship and the wings affect pretty much everything on the ship handling. And this is like something that's really important to me personally, uh, because now I can, I need to take care of my ship. I cannot just like speed up and, and hope that IFCS will correct all the errors that I'm doing with my piloting skills. No, IFCS cannot overcorrect everything. The shape of the ship um, affects the lift and drag. These debug planes, we size them to either increase or reduce the lift and drag in any given axis. And then that will increase or decrease the maneuverability of whatever axis you're traveling in. It gives the ships a lot of characteristics. So just to, just to say, they're still very controllable compared to like planes or so, but they're acting more like planes. And this is like, like this, it just feels real. Like you, you, you feel the, you feel the air you're going through. Um, so in terms of like atmospheric, like the feeling just flying over an atmosphere now, or flying over a planet, is immensely great now. So with these aerodynamic changes, what we're really kind of going for is the ability of ships to be different. Which means if you've got an M50, it's a racing ship, it's a light ship. You can pull some really extreme G in the corners, but you can also pull some really cool maneuvers. So when it comes to racing, that's really good to define kind of the racing experience once we have racing on planets. But also it's going to kind of take into consideration some of the larger ships and just, and just the differences in performance of these ships and how the players compare them in atmosphere. You'll want to bring uh, the right ship for the job with regards to planets. If you've got a supply mission on a planet with thick atmospheric density, to avoid any knocks or any turbulence throwing your ship around and potentially causing you to crash, you might want to bring a beefier, heavier ship so you can have a more streamlined journey to your destination. Weather's going to play a big part in how players approach atmospheric flight. 
as uh, let's say you were on uh, Microtech with very strong winds, the wind is going to blow uh, your ship in certain directions and you're going to want to counteract that. But it also means that as you're flying, these forces are going to change how uh, you control your ship. So you might do a sharp right turn and then the wind slightly overcooks it, meaning you'll crash if you're not careful. If you, you crash or damage your ship or a rather managed to take out one of your thrusters, it's really going to pull in one direction. And as a player, you've got to counteract that. So you've got to try and counterbalance a missing thruster. If you lose like a main thruster and the ship's got two, you're going to have to pull the ship slightly in one direction to still move forwards. So in terms of like feel of flight, this is a massive step, which really, really excites me. So we want combat in Star Citizen to be a varied experience. We don't want there to be just a single way to win. We don't want people to be min-maxing stats. We don't want people to just rely on alpha strikes. And that really promotes player choice over just ship selection and item selection. So with everything being a lot closer and more dynamic and hectic, uh, we needed to do some improvements to how targeting works. We're moving towards a more look-based targeting system than a, an aim-based one. You can use head tracking or you can use free look to look at different targets and, and scan around the around the, your, your space and see which ones are most interesting to you. Uh, and then when you found one, you can either lock it or you can pin it. And locking it is uh, effectively, it, has the, it gives you all the combat information available to you that you would expect. So you get shields, you get targeting pips, you get MFDs. You can only have one of these at a time, but you will need additional targets that you might want to care about, um, you know, friendly targets or enemies that you might want to deal with later, things like this. Uh, that's what PIN's targets are for. Pinning is something that we had in the early Arena Commander patches and which was lost over time because of the uh, maintenance overhead of the old UI tag. So with the new UI technology, uh, the building blocks, we can bring pinning back. Um, though we will have them in a somewhat different form than we had before. The main aspect of pinning is that you can persistently target something and share it with your crew. So it's not finished, right? We also want to have something like pinning shared with other, with other ships and all that. Um, but that, of course, will have to happen in later releases. Uh, for now, we have a solid first step, which we can iterate easily on. So if a pilot pins a target, the turret's going to see what this target is. And they can then talk about it and coordinate their attacks based on that. One thing that we learned in the past is that you cannot ship a new feature if you do not have appropriate UI support. So for the turrets, we created a very barebone UI. The turret UI will tell you exactly where a turret is pointing. It will tell you about the state of the turret. It will tell you what kind of like modes on the turret you have enabled. For example, combined versus staggered fire. Turrets are now a threat. They deal damage. And so players are really going to have to reconsider how they might have approached combat scenarios. The new turret system allows multi-crew to be more viable in gameplay. We added a thing called fixed assist, and this is not just for the turrets, it's also for the fixed weapons. It takes an angular offset between your current aim and the aim direction of your target, and then based on that ratio, and if we are within certain thresholds, it nudges your bullets a bit towards the target. As for the control method, we included a VJOY style control scheme, which is the same that we're using in ships. So um, you have, you're gonna have like a VJOY cursor on your, on, around your crosshair of the turrets, and by slaving that VJOY around, your turret will follow the motion. We also added a, a velocity limiter. So with your mouse wheel, just like in any other uh, situation in the game, you can ad adapt your, your velocity, and for turrets, that would be the rotation of velocity. And um, this hookup with all the access bindings makes makes actually quite nice to control turrets with a with a hotas as well. So you can just have like your left hand on your on your throttle, which is then just controlling the turret speed. Where and with the rest, you just control the turret direction. So in the past, it was quite easy for a group of uh, small fighters to be able to kind of overrun one of the larger ships, despite its many turrets available. Uh, whereas now, you might find that you're a little more careful, you're a little more considerate, and maybe try and uh, talk about your combat scenario before uh, engaging uh, a large ship. Okay, I've got one. Two more guys. Down. Got some going. 
One more. You're nearly done. Bam. Yeah. Nearly What's defeated all the gladii. You did it. All Yay! Finished. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So the changes in 310 are the next step in the flight and combat experience. They're not the first, and they definitely won't be the last. We don't want there to be a single way of just winning combat no matter what. We don't want DPS races or min-maxing stats. We want you as a player to have as much influence over the outcome of combat as the ship you've selected. We know some players embrace change a lot and some are very scared of it, but we do encourage everyone to get in game and test it out for yourselves. We're really excited for these changes for Star Citizen and we look forward to seeing what you do with them. The way that ships fly and fight their way through space and atmosphere alike is at the heart of the Star Citizen and Squadron 42 experiences. And as John said, these changes for Alpha 3.10 are the next step in that continuing evolution for both. If you'd like to learn more about what's happening, you can check out the comm link that's currently available now on the robertspaceindustries.com website, as well as keep an eye out for when wider PTU testing becomes available for all so that you can get in and try it yourself. With that, we'd like to bring this quarterly season of ISC to a close. But before we let you go for the next few weeks, we wanted to try something new and run down some of the features, fixtures, and fixes coming your way in the upcoming Alpha 3.10 in a new segment we're creatively referring to as the Patch Report. Let's get to it. In no particular order, we've got the Vehicle Impounding, where different infractions can have various fines and durations, meaning lighter penalties for blocking pads and a longer duration forfeiture for crimes like pad ramming. Also, players lingering over landing areas without permission should now see a countdown timer warning them of imminent impounding should they not withdraw. Delivery mission improvements, where Alpha 3.10 begins the process of a complete overhaul to the way they work, starting with local deliveries which now have multiple pickup and drop off locations. Of course, there's also a new uh, drug delivery mission for those who enjoy visiting the darker corners of the verse. Vehicle paint schemes are coming to vendors throughout the Stanton system, allowing players to personalize the look and feel of your vehicles for AUEC earned in-game. Electron damage weapons like the Atzcap sniper rifle and Uberov pistol bring an electric new way to take out your enemies outside of their ships and vehicles. Body dragging will allow unconscious or deceased characters to be dragged around the environment by other players and I'm certain won't make for some amusing videos from the community. Restricted Areas V2, where we've finally done away with the last remnants of the ugly red areas and implemented a new spline-based landing system that will help guide pilots to their correct destination and away from places they shouldn't be going. New thruster efficiency curves that lower the strength of thrusters in atmosphere depending on the thickness of the air which then in turn feeds into a complete overhaul of vehicle aerodynamics you just heard about. High speed combat changes designed to bring your opponents in closer by slowing the slew rate of gimbaled weapons and the lock on time for missiles at top speeds, encouraging a more engaging combat experience. New targeting methodology that should help players better find and keep track of their targets. Turret improvements, which bring a new control scheme to bear that pilots should already be familiar with in an effort to make riding passenger and multi-crew ships more fun and exciting. AI improvements like cover usage, shotgun assault tactics, and a better sense of when to move and hold position all aim to make FPS engagements with non-player characters more dynamic and interesting than ever before. Visual improvements to the M50 and balance changes to the CAR-2 wall mean there's something new to look forward to for owners of these speedy and nimble spacecraft respectively. Grimhex is getting a new shop, new hangars, and a new viewing area to support the future release of scramble races. Not to be left out, new Babbage is getting hangars and perhaps a more impressive new shop of their own with the upcoming factory line and its new array of Mobiglass variants players can purchase. Then, the various planets and moons all throughout the Stanton system are seeing the return of outposts, derelicts, and caves that were lost after the conversion to Planet Tech V4, but now with improved lighting, exterior dressing, and protection from the weather elements outside. 
feel like I'm leaving something out. I mean, sure, we didn't cover everything that's in the upcoming Alpha 3.10, but there's something else. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Uh, for another quarterly season of Inside Star Citizen, I'm your host, Jared Huckabee. Thank you for watching. Thank you for playing. And we'll see you all next month.